Welcome to my fifth video on building a radio controlled sailing yacht of a Morris M36. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the radio control hardware that I used and how I installed it. So it's going to be a relatively short video compared to the others. This picture shows the radio control hardware installed in the hull. I'm going to walk through the various components from aft to forward in the hull, or in this picture, from left to right. At the extreme left end, you can just see where the rudder post comes up through the bottom of the boat. As I said earlier, when I was talking about installing the rudder, this is a carbon fiber tube that the stainless steel rudder post passes up through. In order to connect the rudder post to the control servo, I had to put a control arm on top of the rudder post. So I machined a tube that would just fit over the top of the rudder post, and I drilled a hole through it. It's a clearance hole for a number 80 machine screw, and I slid it onto the rudder post to the spot that I wanted it to be at so that the rudder would be in the right position and then used a pencil through the hole to mark where the uh, hole would be on the rudder post and pulled the rudder post out and drilled a through hole through the rudder post so that I could pass the bolt through. Now when that was done I slid the control arm back onto the rudder post and bolted it to the rudder post so that it can't move. From that control arm, there is a brass rod that goes forward to the control arm on the rudder control servo, which is the aftmost uh, black component in the center of the boat. I decided to go with all Futaba components, largely because Futaba radios were readily available and they are quite they were at that time quite cheap. So for compatibility, all the components inside the boat are Futaba. So this the rudder control servo is a Futaba 3003 servo. It has a power of 44 inch ounces. And that is connected, as I said, from the control arm, which is a piece of fiberglass reinforced balsa wood, screwed to the control head on the servo. It's, that is connected via a brass rod to the control arm on the rudder itself. Just below that uh, servo in this picture is the battery uh, holder. And I, in this picture, it has a uh, four AA alkaline batteries in it, but later on I started using uh, rechargeable NIM-H batteries, and uh, in more recent days I've switched over to lithium batteries because they last longer and they provide full power for longer. Now just forward of the rudder servo and the battery uh, box, is the main sail control servo. I made the sail control arm that you see on top of that, which is screwed to the yoke on top of the servo, uh, out of carbon fiber. It's nine inches long. This boat is about ten and a half inches maximum beam. And the upper end of that servo is where I attach the control line for the main sheet. And the lower end in this picture of that control arm is where I attach the control for the jib sheet. The servo itself is another Futaba servo. It's a 3802, which has a power of 122 inch ounces of torque. And it uh, seems to work very well. I was pretty concerned about sizing this servo properly, so I went to the trouble to calculate the maximum load that I would expect on the sails using standard uh, 
naval architecture formulas uh, at a wind speed of about 10 knots, which is about the most that this particular boat can deal with, and determined that this servo would do the job. Now just forward to that servo is the radio itself, and off the top of my head I don't remember the number, but it is the radio receiver for a two-channel system, one channel for the sail control servo and one channel for the rudder control servo. And you can see the wiring going back to the servos from the radio receiver. There's also a white wire that starts at the radio receiver, and that is the antenna. I didn't want the antenna to be visible from outside the boat, so what I did was I glued a piece of 3 16 inch diameter styrene tubing to the underside of the shear clamp uh, in the hull. And if you'll recall from the last video, the shear clamp is a ledge just below the shear or top of the hull that the deck attaches to. And it's inside the hull. So that white antenna wire goes across and into that tube and runs just below the shear of the boat. So unless the boat is heeled over and has buried its rail, uh, that is always going to be in a position where it can receive signal. And so far, it works really well. I've had no problems at all with it. So these are the basic radio control components, and they work pretty well. The radio that I have is a Futaba Attack 2DR. It's a 75 megahertz radio, and the particular way I have this set up is for channel 90 in the 75 megahertz band. Now, since I built this boat, everybody has switched over to 2.4 gigahertz radios, although the 75 megahertz band is still legal. But all I would have to do to switch to a 2.4 gigahertz radio would be to remove and replace the radio receiver and buy a new radio. Unfortunately, 2.4 gigahertz radios are expensive, so that would end up costing me the better part of $300 to replace components I paid about $60 for when I built the boat. So, since they still work, I don't see any point in replacing them. So anyway, that's the radio control system. It's a two-channel system. A single servo controls both the main and the jib. It did take a little fooling around after I got it all put together and got the boat rigged to determine exactly where to attach the uh, sheets to the control arm so that that would get the appropriate amount of movement for the two sails. But after a little trial and error, I worked that out. Anyway, that pretty much covers the radio control hardware. As I said, this is a short video. So, hope you uh, understand now how this boat is set up for control. And, hope you enjoyed seeing this video. If you did, please subscribe if you haven't. And don't forget to click the notification bell. And if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.